Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is your truly TJ Jones back at you here on the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, if you're just joining, uh, you know, if you didn't check out the last video, I did an interview with defensive tackle in the New Orleans Saints, Mario Edwards Jr. Uh, thank you all for those that uh, actually checked out the live video of me uh, interviewing Mario Edwards. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I, I keep it uh at a certain time man mario is getting ready for a training camp uh he's actually uh you know i think on his way to the facility right now to actually you know get some things done so i didn't want to keep him long man so i do apologize i know people probably had questions that they wanted to ask you know there were things that uh you know people wanted to say but i do apologize for that you know i didn't want to keep mario alone uh you know saying you know and um, i wanted to make sure i keep it between you know what i'm saying a, a a decent uh, time frame man so but I want to thank you all for those that checked it out um, back once again, you know what I'm saying, to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, that was, you know, that was that was dope, man. You know what I'm saying? You talked a little bit about the New Orleans Saints. You talked about training camp. Uh, you talked, uh, you know, he talked about Jameis Winston joining the team and expectations for this season as a defense. So, uh, you know, once again, I want to thank Mario for his time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I want to thank him for, you know, being a part of the show. Uh, but this is the show that is for the who that nation man just to show where i answer the questions and uh, i know i be ripping them uh he, he did us uh, ask some questions and stuff like that i'll be you know so like i said i want to apologize man but you know i i, I want to keep it kind of short man you know we talked and uh, i had to make sure that you know I, I had him off at a certain time so uh you know maybe he'll, he'll i'm pretty sure you know what i'm saying i'll ask him again he'll come back on the show and he'll be able to answer some of the questions from the who that nation so uh just wanted to make that just wanted to make that be known, man. Uh, shouts out to Brian, uh, Iceman, T, and Chemo who are on uh, live right now. Uh, Brian says, hi. Iceman says, hey, that's, what is the purpose of life? Uh, let me see. Uh, Chemo says, all good, brother. We still here. Well, thank you all, man. Like I said, I just wanted to make sure, you know, I, I had to get off the live and stuff like that. Just wanted to thank him and, you know what I'm saying, for being a part of the show and everything like that. And thank you all for being a part of the show as well man if you have any questions about the new orleans saints uh you know saying feel free to comment uh you know mario kind of talked about a few things you know i feel like they need to be discussed uh he talked about the defense and you know what i'm saying the defense uh you know in a wild card game of you know what i'm saying the playoffs and stuff like that he felt as if there wasn't much you know what i'm saying minnesota was actually doing it was more like what they were doing you know what I'm saying it was mostly like self-inflicted things um, I felt like it wouldn't be right for me to ask him about the offense because that's not the position that he plays. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, so I decided not to ask him those those questions about the offense that everybody wanted to know. Um, he said that he's looking forward to playing Tom Brady, getting that sack. <laughs> I mean, and um, looking forward to possibly making a run at the Super Bowl, man. So uh, what did y'all think about the interview? Uh, what, what did y'all think about it? Just let me know. Uh, let me see. Who that to everybody that Travis? Uh, when are you getting Elvin Kamara on your show and ask him some questions? <laughs> I man, I, look, I look, I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know about that. You know, only thing I can do is try. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the only thing I can do is try and, and ask. You know, I'm trying to. I'm lining some people up right now, trying to see if they'll be a part of the show. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of them uh, saying yes. You know, and, and figuring out a time. Uh, you are brother man always got to check out the podcast yeah man i appreciate that uh i mean honestly i don't really have anything much to you know to add today you know what i'm saying i'm just excited about training camp uh the nfl uh let me take the headphones off i don't need them anymore i just need to hear uh the interview man. but anyway i'm just excited about training camp man i'm excited about training camp getting ready for the 2020 season it seems like the the owners and uh, and uh, NFL uh, players seem like they're on the same page. Seem like the season is going to start. Uh, you have like some teams are going to allow uh, you know uh, fans inside of the stadiums and stuff like that with mask on. Uh, you know, I, I feel like uh, that's a little bit of a mistake if you ask me. But I mean, it seems like they're on the same page and it looks like they're going to start the season. Look like guys, you know, what I'm saying are really just trying to. Uh, be safe and there's nothing wrong with that you know I know a lot of people are frustrated and angry at the fact that the NFL is about to start and and players are reluctant about it and you're hearing all this stuff about hashtag we want to play 
But I just think that it's very important for those guys to actually have an opportunity uh, to make sure that they're in the best uh, environment, man, because we wouldn't want to be out there in, a, in an environment that will cause us to be sick as well. We love football. We want football to come back. We love our Saints. We say who that, uh, you know what I'm saying? We cheer for our team. But at the same time, we want these guys to be safe. And now it seems like, you know, saying with training camp and everything like that, they seem like they're trying to practice uh, some precautions just to try to protect people from contracting COVID. Uh, you know, they're going to be having testing uh, more frequently. They're going to be uh, different facilities and stuff like that. They're going to be stretched out. Uh, guys are not going to be all on top of each other you know, and stuff like that. And they're going to expand. Uh, honestly, they're going to kind of expand the locker room because at the beginning of, the, of training camp, there's a lot of bodies inside of there, man. So, I'm very interested to see how this season is going to start. It seems like the world itself is, is slowly starting to get back, you know, to sports. Uh, we had the scrimmage uh, games uh, kicked off, I think, a couple of days ago in the NBA. Uh, Major League Baseball is back. And now the NFL is about to kick off training camp. Um, as we know, the Saints officially announced that there won't be any preseason games, which um me personally i'm not hurting i'm not crying boo-hoo in the neck you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i'm extremely excited about that i don't like preseason at all but i do think it's going to hurt some of those players that are on the bubble it's going to hurt some of those players that probably are not familiar with the same system um i feel bad for them like that but it's going to take them to put their best foot forward in order for them to actually make the team man this is the time where you see what a guy is really made of does he really want it do not uh, squander any opportunity that you get. Maximize all of your reps. That is very, very important. Um, I feel like uh, if they if they do that, then they shouldn't need training camp. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back up a little bit, see um, some people that came in. Ricky, what's going on? Thank you very much for checking it out. Jackpot. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm very skeptical about how long it will last. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm very skeptical about it as well, you know, but um, it's a good start. You know what I'm saying? It's good to know that they're going to try to do it. Uh, let me see. Are they going to wear visors inside their helmets when they uh, play this year? Um, I've seen like a, 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 a face mask or in a helmet, you know what I'm saying? That kind of resembles like, I guess, like a mask or something like that. So um, I don't know just yet. I mean, I've seen like some prototypes, but um, it, it's nothing definite yet. So, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be wearing something of that nature. Uh, training camp to start on time. Yeah, I seen that in the article. Uh, let's sign T.O. That boy still got it. Yeah, man, I seen T.O. out there uh, racing Tyreek Hill, man. Tyreek, this has not been a good two weeks for Tyreek Hill. Uh, first, Tyreek Hill was out there getting mossed by a high schooler. And then he turns around and gets smoked by a 46-year-old man. I mean, you can say that Tyreek Hill gave him 10 yards, you know what I'm saying, which I feel like was a big mistake, you know. Um, but at the at the end of the day, the fact that a 46-year-old man is running with about a 25 or 26-year-old uh, kid, you know what I'm saying, is, is pretty amazing in itself. I mean, he still looked like he jacked up, still looked like uh, he in football playing shape, man. So, shouts out to T.O., man. Shouts out, to, shouts out to him, man. He still looked good uh just announced yeah yeah chemo i actually seen that i seen that article before the interview itself uh they need the, the players to be in a bubble or this won't work all uh, right check this out man uh it's not it's not that easy um it's not that easy like it is in the nba in the nba you know what i'm saying there's not a, a lot of players okay and there's not a lot of coaches i mean there's probably like what 12 to 14 players on the team uh, about three or four uh coaches um the head coach the assistant coaches on the bench i mean so it, it's easy to it, it's easy to uh kind of put everything together you know what i'm saying it's, it's kind of easy to kind of maneuver when it comes to that but when it comes to like the nfl i mean you got 53 men um you know saying plus uh you know saying coaches and equipment guys and and all that kind of stuff on the sidelines so it's not like they can do the same things man you know it's not like they can do the same stuff they were doing, you know what I'm saying, in the NBA. I mean, even in Major League Baseball, you know what I'm saying? With Major League Baseball, guys don't have to be all on top of each other. I mean, you think about the, the left field, center field, right field, you know what I'm saying? They're stretched out. Uh, first base, second base, third base, they're stretched out. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're not all, all on top of each other. And the only argument that you can make the guy being on top of each other is the empire and catcher. Uh, besides that, you know what I'm saying? You really don't have issues with social distancing 
um, so much about, you know, so, so much as you do with football. So um, even though, you know, uh, the bubble thing would be a good idea, it would be hard to manage um, with, with the NFL. That's just my opinion. Uh, Lisa says, how often will they be tested and what kind of tests will be administered? Well, the test that will be administered is a, a, a basic COVID-19 test, Lisa. Um, it's a, a test where, you know what I'm saying, you take that little stick and, and shove it up your nose, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all know how it is. Whoever took a COVID-19 test, y'all know what I'm talking about. Man, these guys are going to get tested, you know what I'm saying? They want to make sure that they're safe. So it's just the same test, you know, like you'll take uh, if you go and get COVID testing, which I encourage everybody out there to do. Please uh, get yourself tested, even if you're not having any symptoms. It's good to know. It's free. So why not? But anyway, um, that, that's how they're going to do it. Just just like they do any other tests, uh, you know, and um, and what kind of t I mean, it, like I say, I think it's probably going to be one of those rapid tests. You know what I'm saying? It's probably there's two there's two different type of tests for those that don't know. There's the COVID-19 test that takes a couple of days in order for your results to come back. And then there's the rapid testing, which it, which it takes about about 30 minutes for your results to come back. So they're probably going to be taking that rapid testing, Lisa. Thank you for thank you for your question. Uh, Dwayne started laughing. Uh, what do you think about Trevor Lawrence? Uh, I think Trevor Lawrence is a really good quarterback. I think uh, he, he's getting the Andrew Luck treatment right now. Uh, a lot of skills. A lot of people just think that he leaps and bounds better uh, than every other quarterback that's coming out of the draft with him. But um, – you know, I still think he has some room to improve. If you ask me, you know, I don't think that uh, I don't think that he just a finished product that they're trying to make him out to be. He has great arm talent, great instincts, uh, great pop and great zip on the ball. Good downfield throw thrower. But um, nah, I mean, he still has some work to do. Uh, God forbid if uh, Kamara drew and Cam catch that ish. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? I think we all are not looking forward to that. TJ, who um uh, who is in your top three receivers? Uh, talking about the NFL right now, I mean, pretty much everybody uh, suspects Julio, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, and Michael Thomas. Those are my three. Uh, no problem, Lisa. Thank you for asking your question. Appreciate it. Uh, Michael says, proud of you, TJ. You came a long way, man. I'm glad I could have catch. One of your live streams. Keep it up, uh, TJ. Who that? Mike, thank you very much, man. Um, I hope you uh, caught that interview. You know, like I said, I know it was a quick interview. It was like 10 minutes. But if you haven't, man, check out the interview I did with uh, Mario Edwards Jr. Um, you know, so I, I really enjoyed the interview and stuff like that. Like I said, hopefully, you know, we can probably get him to come back uh, in the middle of the season or something like that when the season is going on to come talk to us about what's going on. So uh, let's see. Uh, did we sign a backup for Lattimore and Jenkins? Uh, no, we didn't sign a, a backup just yet. It's probably just the same old usual suspects uh, that, that's been rolling around here, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I think we all can agree that the Saints need some depth um, at that position. They need some depth um, at the uh, the corner uh, position. You know, I think that they need some guys that can play on the inside and outside. We talked about this on, on several occasions, man, on the State of the Saints podcast, where we feel like they need depth and not just guys that can play in the nickel, man. You need guys that can play on both sides. And they don't have to have the same skill set and stuff like that as a Lattimore and a Jenkins. But just in case one of those guys go down, they can be formidable out there. That, that's exactly what we need right there. Uh, Jerry says, great interview, TJ. Man, I appreciate it, man. I ain't going to lie. You know what I'm saying? I felt I was a, I was, I was a little... I won't say I was nervous, but I kept on like, you know, like we get to a point and you're like, um, I don't want to mess up. I'm trying to remember everything that I wanted to say. And I had my questions in front of the screen and I'm trying to, you know, what I'm saying make sure I get his, the name of the book. Right. So it's like I was trying to remember some of the questions that I wanted to ask him. But um, nevertheless, you know, what I'm saying I just wanted to make sure that I, you know, give you all a good interview. Well, I, I, it was all right in my opinion. I could have did better. You know what I'm saying? I, I think so. But I have to go back and take a look at it. But thank you. If you, you appreciate it, that's all that matters. Uh, Jack CP3 says, uh, Shannon Sharp face. <laughs> uh, great job on the interview, TJ, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I missed the interview with Mario Edwards. I'll check it out later. Yeah, man, check it out. Not It's not long. It's like 10 minutes. 
Uh, and then on top of that, man, I want to make sure I, I let something uh, be known too, man. For you know, I know people was in the chat and they wanted me to ask them questions and stuff. But once again, if you're just tuning in, it wasn't nothing personal. I don't want anybody to think you know what I'm saying I was around this thing, big league and people. Uh, man, look when you have interviews with people and stuff like that, it's, it's important for you to kind of stay within those lines of questions, man. I mean, I'm not trying to you know get nobody in trouble or not have them ask you know what i'm saying answer the questions that they're not prepared for you know and the question you know what i'm saying i didn't really discuss or you know what i'm saying like about answering questions and stuff like that i had like a, some questions that you know what i'm saying i wanted to ask him uh questions that he wanted me to you know what i'm saying talk to him about and you know what i'm saying i wanted to make sure i respect that man so i didn't want to make which you know let anybody know that probably made a comment wanted me to ask something uh to him I don't want y'all to think, you know what I'm saying, I, I just didn't want to. I just wanted to you know, let you all know that I just wanted to, you know, make sure that I made the, the guests feel comfortable, man. You know, and for some of y'all that have been following me uh, for a very long time, you know what I'm saying, like y'all know, you know, like, we, you know, that's probably one of the, you know what I'm saying, biggest guests we've had on here, you know what I'm saying, the actual Saints player to come on the show. So, you know, I want to make sure, you know, I make them feel comfortable, man, so. Uh, you know, later on down the line, you know, saying I, you know, we'll, we'll probably, you know, get people to, you know, be able to ask questions and stuff like that. And maybe that was my bad, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I should have, you know what I'm saying, discussed that. But between like him getting ready for training camp and him taking the time out just to talk about his book, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I just wanted to make sure he felt comfortable and, you know, show him that I appreciate him being on there. Uh, my big brother EJ says, how important is it to get off to a strong start in the season with no preseason games for the Saints? Well, it's very important, man. And this is why some of these reps in camp and, you know, this is going to be very, very important. This is going to be real important for them, man. They got to come up and then they got to hit the ground running. Can't be no half stepping um, because they can't afford to. And we all know that the Saints have a history over the past couple of years of starting slow. Um, you know, sl starting slow. Uh, this was the first time I think in a while, about four years or something like that, they actually won a week one game. So uh, they they have to start off fast, man. I mean, they have the advantage right now. Uh, if you think about all the teams in the division, for the exception of that team, uh, you know, the Saints have the advantage. You know, they have the chemistry. They have the guys uh, that are coming back. Guys understand each other tendencies. You got a few uh, players that are in the mix. Uh, but uh, at the same time, you know, you pretty much got the same usual suspects on the team. So it's very important for the Saints to start off uh, on a high note and take advantage of some of the chemistry that they possess over the Tampa Bays and the that teams and the Carolina Panthers. You know, so I, I feel like that's going to be a uh, very, very imperative uh, that they start off uh, on a high note. No doubt about that uh Derek says you did a hell of a job I, I appreciate that man I appreciate it uh we about to raid Kamara's DM to get that interview you heard me and I appreciate it man y'all do that y'all 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 hit them up y'all say you know uh can you be on the State of Saints podcast you know to let, let them know I, I'm open you know I'm trying to hit up everybody man I'm also trying to hit up former Saints players as well man so want to just get in touch I, I just want to interview anybody you know what i'm saying like anybody talking about the new orleans saints anybody that's a part of the organization i know we would love to hear from them you know what i'm saying it's not like i'm trying to be on some old you know what i'm saying some stephen a smith controversial uh interview type stuff you know i just want to uh you know i just want to pick their mind about the season and everything like that and i know i know we uh, would love to see more interviews like that i know i would this is the on this is only the beginning tj you will interview many more i already know you will uh, i appreciate it man y'all y'all making y'all make your boy feel pretty good man i appreciate it you know uh, but i mean i i can't really take any credit for this i really can't man i can't i can't take any credit for this show you all are the reason why you know you know this show is possible you know i'm just a guy talking behind a camera you all make the show what it is from your support, your love, and you know what I'm saying, your, your comments. You all make the show go, and I'm I'm appreciative of that. Uh TJ Jones, I'm glad you came on. Great interview with Mario Edwards Jr. Man, thank you, man. I appreciate that, Jerry. Uh let me see. John says, get Jameis. <laughs> uh I don't know, man. I, I see for uh for a hundred dollars. <laughs> for a hundred dollars. 
uh, you know, he can give me a shout out on cameo, man. But I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't know about that. You know, I, I feel like that's kind of to me, that's almost like buying subscribers or buying followers or something like that, in my opinion. You know, no disrespect to anybody that want to go that route, but that's just not me. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I was to catch Jameis around the way and I, I see him and I'm like, man, but for me to pay a hundred dollars and stuff like I feel like I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't want to make anybody feel bad that may decide to do that. But in my own personal opinion, this is just my personal opinion. Um, people can do what they feel. But I just feel like that kind of I, it's kind of like throwing a wool over the eyes of your of your users or something. I mean, of your uh, of your viewers. That, that's the way I feel about it, because you're trying to make yourself seem like, you know, like you way up here or something like that or you know what i'm saying or trying to give your show like super duper credibility i mean but you actually pay for it like i don't i feel like the people that are out there that's grinding and, and people that are out there really working hard trying to make their platform the best i think that's the route you know what i'm saying i i just think that you're making it a job if you're trying to go out here and trying to pay for people to say that you're watching this show and, and honestly why would you want anybody to say that you're watching this show when they don't even watch the show. So it's like, it, it's disingenuous, you know? So I'm not on that. But if Jameis Winston wanted to come on the show and I didn't have to pay him for it, you know what I'm saying? Then I would love to talk to Jameis Winston. But I, I don't want to pay anybody to be on the show. I just don't. Like, I don't feel like that's right. And I don't feel like that's, a, I feel like I'll be doing you all a disservice. And it'll be based on a lot. I don't think I can live with myself for that. Uh, TJ, can you get a hookup with Pat Swilling, Lord, uh, Pat Swilling, Lord Willing? Uh, I can try. I mean, I don't know if he's on social media or not, but I can give it a shot. Uh, what do you think about Aaron Glenn still having a job? Um, I think he's done enough for him to keep his job, but um, he's starting to be on borrowed time. Um, I think that the secondary has gotten better under him. Um, they, they have a lot more confidence, a lot more ability. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And they, they play with a lot more swag. Uh, but um, uh, I think they need to get a little bit better when it comes to the technique. Uh, I talked to uh, CB last night. He said he thank you, TJ, for being his guest on a podcast Wednesday night. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, CB, man, man, I enjoyed that. You know what I'm saying? I enjoyed the show with CB. CB uh, has a really good mind for football in general not just for the saints but in football man you can tell um you know what i'm saying he was really like ping 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 you know what i'm saying it was just you know coming off the head you know what i'm saying about a lot of different topics so i really enjoyed that man i i enjoy like having real uh just real true football talk man you know what i'm saying i just love talking to individuals that just love the game of football you know it's not about you know what i'm saying like it's not so much about you know what I'm saying I, I I got all this knowledge you know stuff like that but it's just about like throwing different ideas out of there getting different perspectives so I really did enjoy it man uh CB man shouts out to him man uh if he's watching right now man y'all check out uh CB man y'all check out his YouTube channel uh WDN chat line um I think if I'm not mistaken I think tonight uh he's uh going live uh, he's going to be playing madden uh, he's using the new orleans saints and he's going to be going up against uh another nfl team man so y'all y'all subscribe to the channel man uh, y'all check him out uh let's see all right it's heard, i already read that one and that one great job brother thank you danny i appreciate it man uh when you get married are you going to get married in a superdome Right, then you asked me that last show. <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm not getting married in the Superdome, bro. I ain't got that kind of money, man. I ain't got that Skrilla, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no, man, me and, me and my uh, fiance, we're going to have a, a private ceremony, man. It's going to be, it's not going to be nothing too major because, you know, of course, we're dealing with COVID-19. Uh, it's just going to be like a small, like, ceremony, just, uh, you know, just us, you know what I'm saying, our son. And then, like, once COVID and stuff like that um, dies down, then we're going to have a, ceremony where the entire family is there so it's gonna happen in a couple of weeks man uh so i'm looking forward to it no i'm not nervous i don't know why i should be i guess but i guess i'll be nervous on the day of uh my big brother ej says a good interview bro i got to cop that book from mario him and tuttle are a good pair 
in the defensive rotation. Yeah, I agree with that, E, man. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for the motivation, brother. You know, I don't like I know for a fact, like 100 percent, like I would not have the love for sports I have if it wasn't for my big brother. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see him in the chatty E. Jones. I would not have. I don't think I would have the courage to actually do this, the knowledge to do this. And I, I I know on another note, I definitely wouldn't have the courage to actually go to college. You know what I'm saying? So I remember this, man. Like, I tell this story often. You know what I'm saying? Y'all give me a few minutes. I you go afford me to tell you a story. I remember me and my brother were sitting and we was waiting for the broad bus on Gentilly Boulevard. And um, I was a, a senior at George Washington Carver High School. And uh, my brother, he was a junior at Dillard University, man. He was waiting on a bus. And um, I remember, like, I was just about to graduate, and I asked him what college was like. And I remember I was just being nervous. I don't know what to go to college. And I remember he was like, college is what you make it. College is what you make it, man. And um, I know that that may seem like there's, there's some vanilla ice cream advice. <laughs> but um, he, he just don't know how much that stuck with me, man. I mean, when I graduated uh, college, what, about – uh, about 12 years ago man but it, it's something that i always remember you know that he said man and i remember him like always going to the store getting those college football magazines and stuff and uh, how we used to pass the time getting home and stuff like that when we had to walk we would ask each other what player this this what, uh, college this player went to and that and man in that process man i just started to love football a lot man and honestly i, I just started to keep up with football because i wanted to keep up with him and have something to talk about with him, man. Cause I looked up to him so much. So, um, thank you, man. Thank you for the inspiration. I, I know, you know what I'm saying? I'm way off in left field somewhere talking about my brother, man, but I just want to let y'all know how much my brother influenced me and how much I love him. You know what I'm saying? Like he, uh, he, uh, a major role model in my life, man. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. Uh, TJ, my sister-in-law is a supervisor for tickets and sales for the Saints and Pelicans. Are you interested in an in interview with her? Uh, well, yeah, she's willing to talk, and uh, you know, she knows uh, you know the Saints and uh, you know, she knows New Orleans Saints. I don't mind, you know, I don't like I said, I don't mind talking to anybody. I interview anybody, you know, if you're you're passionate about the Saints and stuff like that. But I mean, you. Real, you you can't be like uh you know what I'm saying you can't be no buzz kill around here. You got to have some enthusiasm around here, man. You can't be around this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like boring the viewers to death. You know what I'm saying? But I would love to have anybody on the show. You know to talk about the New Orleans Saints and as long as you have like a platform or something like that. Also, man, I, I you know no disrespect to anybody out there. You know what I'm saying? But we just want to make sure that we just you know we we want to elevate people. You know what I'm saying? We want to help each other elevate. And, uh, you know, saying as long as you got something to say and, you know, you got something going on, I, I don't mind. Uh, the players should want to be on shows for the fans. Uh, did not realize shows have to pay. Why not look out for the little guy players? Fan love the game. Uh, John, let me uh, let me uh, let me make this straight. Let me make this clear, man. Like, they're not like I didn't have to pay him to be on this show. You know what I'm saying? I don't want nobody to think that. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he did it out of the kindness of his heart. You know what I'm saying? For him to do this. I want to make that perfectly clear. And I'm not saying that other players out here are not doing interviews for, for free. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. I'm pretty sure they do. You know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of players out there that do that. You know what I'm saying? But um, at the same time, I just look at this, this cameo thing. I, I don't, like I said, I just saw it like when Jameis like promoted it on his Instagram. Uh, I don't, you know what I'm saying? It's just basically like, celebrities not just football players but celebrities too they 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 ask you for a payment and with that payment like they you send them like a message that you want to give to somebody like if you want to wish your grandmother a happy birthday or something like that or you want to miss your wish your brother uh you know saying success on his new promotion or something like like you have to pay them to do that on this app called cameo okay that, like i don't know about the other interview i don't know about um, you know what I'm saying? If you got to pay this person to come sit down, I don't know about all that. I don't know about that. But all I know is, you know, I just feel like um, you shouldn't have to pay a person to sit down with you and talk to you. You know what I'm saying? I just don't. Like, I'm not saying if that's what you want to do, you got you got the Skrilla. Go ahead. Be be about that. You know what I'm saying? But as for me, man, I, I just man, I just want people to feel me. You know what I'm saying? Like, feel feel what I'm saying. 
and just respect what I'm doing. And if you don't like what I'm doing, fine. If you don't like it, I'm cool with that. I'm 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 whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm not gonna pay anybody to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like just just feel me. Like if you if you feel what I'm saying and you you like what I'm doing, then you know what I'm saying, like cool. But you know, if you like, okay, man, I'll be on there for this price. Nah, man, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I've been doing this show for about two years. I've been doing this show for about two years, so you know, I'll be all right. Uh, well, then players have training camp this year. I'm going to have to stay in home. I mean, yeah, in here, in a room together. We bunk mates, or will they uh get to go home after practice? Uh, no, they actually have to stay at the facility, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they can go home. I think they're going to have to go to this, like a hotel or something, but all the players are going to have different rooms, okay? All of them going to have different rooms and stuff like that. They're going to be practicing social distancing. Um, when they're on the road, they're going to have to wear a mask. Uh, you know what I'm saying? For a training camp, they're getting tested every other day. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And they basically it can get moved to every day. It depends on if your team falls into a certain percentage of players contracting COVID-19. So once you, if your team gets into the five percentile, they're going to be testing people every single day. Okay, so that, that's how that goes. Uh, who that from? North Carolina. TJ, your podcast makes the workday so much better. Go face Griller. Thank you very much. Uh, and shouts out to North Carolina. You right, you right next to me. I'm out in South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. Okay, I'll give her a call after this chat. She's a diehard. You'll you'll love her personality. Well, that sounds good, man. Yeah, tell her, man. Let me know. Lisa says maybe you should interview some of the ticket holders. Some of us couldn't have our <laughs> have our seats this season. First ten rows. So sad. We just opt out. Uh, well, Lisa, I mean, that's a, that's a good topic right there too. Um, that's, that's a good topic, you know what I'm saying? To have, you know, a lot of season ticket holders, you know what I'm saying? You know, get, getting the option of, uh, you know, selling their tickets back, you know what I'm saying? Getting full refunds, rolling it over to the 2021 season. So that is a, a really good topic. Um, that's, that's something interesting. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. Uh, big brother E Jones. Uh, so we should thank you for TJ and his knowledge with sports. I appreciate y'all, man. Real talk, yeah, man. Uh, now I won't go all, I will, I will give that but credit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, man, I will give that but credit, you know, like he, you know, he, he influenced me, but I know my sports, you know. <laughs> now nah, I'm just kidding, man. Like, my brother really has influenced me, man. He, he definitely instilled that love of sports that I have inside of me, no doubt. Uh, we will miss our seats, but we understand. I mean, Lisa, you have to understand that. You got to understand that, Lisa. You got to understand that it's about being safe. You know what I'm saying? It's about being safe. It's not like, you know, about putting people in harm's way. And I, I get it. Like, we love the Saints. We love to cheer for them, man. Superdome be rocking. One of the loudest venues when it's at its, at its apex. I get it. But we want to make sure that we're being safe. And we want to make sure that we're not, you know, causing – uh, anybody to contract anything like most people you know they're walking around with COVID-19 and don't even know it you can have no symptoms that resemble COVID-19 at all you can be perfect and you can be walking around with it and you can control you can get this to somebody and cause them to be sick beyond their wildest dreams so it is you know we got to make sure that we're being safe and we also got to protect we got to protect each other you know so yeah uh, if they want fans in the stands or any arena, uh, put two big screens or uh, one on one side and one on the other side and put the uh, fans up on the big screen for each other's team like they do for soccer. Um, interesting point there, Brian. Um, uh, I agree with you for the, with the screens. Um, I do feel like they need to have like a separation in screens or something like that, like in seats. That would make sense or you know what i'm saying like every every other seat i say that because i think you need to skip a seat I, I went to the doctor's office the other day and i thought they had a really good uh concept like they had like one seat that was open and then it, you know what I'm saying they'll tape off the seat next to them i feel like that's what they need to do like how you said they need to have like those little almost like those little hockey uh glasses or whatever like that you have one and then you know what i'm saying it stretches over maybe like one or two seats and then the next one and then the next one I feel like that would be a good, you know what I'm saying? That would be good. 
But I mean, you're still going to have some complications, man. I mean, if you ever been to the Superdome, uh, you already know, man. I mean, it's close quarters up in that thing, man. I mean, you have to say, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. You know what I'm saying? Just to get through. So there's only so much you can do to protect the person from this. Like, honestly, it's, it's only so much you can do. So uh, I think that they're doing the right things. And uh, I think they need to adjust accordingly um, once the season, uh, you know, starts to progress. And I'm pretty sure they're going to have some cases, man. And it's going to be somebody that's uh, extremely popular. It's going to be somebody extremely popular. Um, knock on wood. If it, Hopefully it's not somebody like Drew Brees or, or Alvin Kamara or something like that or other team like Tom Brady. If that's, if that's the case, they're going to shut something down. Or there's going to be a real bad stretch of ugly football. It's going to be some ugly football being played, folks. Uh, will the Superdome be neutralized without fans for the Saints this season? Will the Saints need to pump uh, fan noise into the dome for games, you think? Uh, e, I don't, I don't think so, man. Um, I don't, I don't think that, uh, they're going to be able to neutralize, uh, you know what I'm saying? The Superdome without the fans. I, I really don't, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I really don't. I, I think that, um, the, the Superdome does give a home field advantage, but I will say this, if you're good, you're good. And I don't feel like they need to pump in crowd noise. No need to do what the Atlanta Falcons do. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They got caught doing you know what I'm saying? We actually got legit fans. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we actually got real true fans, but we ain't got to be sitting up here piping in crowd noise. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be something like that. E, you know what I'm saying? I, I know they're going to probably practice with that because they want to give people at home the the, the 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 whole experience and stuff like that. But, I mean, I think that uh, the Atlanta Falcons, I think they had a report to say that they were going to let about – uh, 20,000 fans in there. So that means that they're going to have about 5,000 up in there. You know what I'm saying? We know they don't have 20,000 fans. <laughs> but, I mean, teams are practicing different things, you know. So uh, just uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Hey, man, uh, I, apologize, I apologize for this. Um, I'm going to have to wrap it up. I'm only going to take a few more questions. Uh, I promised my uh, my fiance. uh you know what I'm saying? I was going to be off at a certain time because she has to go somewhere. So uh, forgive me, man, for having to cut this short. Um, I'm probably going to come back later on, you know what I'm saying, so we can finish this up. Uh, I have been seeing that Caden Ellis uh, commercial. Do you think Caden Ellis will take it to the next level and secure a roster spot? Well, yes, I do, um, John. I, I feel like he will secure a roster spot because he secured a roster spot as a seventh-round pick before he got hurt. Um Caden Ellis' dad played in the NFL for the Detroit Lions, man. Um, he has it in his blood. He's a really instinctive uh, linebacker, man. He's a sideline to sideline guy. He's not afraid to stick his head in, and he's a short tackler. And, uh, you know, so I'm looking forward to seeing him play, man. And I, I have a lot of uh, – I have huge expectations for him, man. I feel like uh, under the toolage of uh, – uh, Mario Davis and maybe with Kiko Alonso out there, I think that he'll be uh, living up to his full potential in no time. Uh, we're going to take one more, man. It says, just saying who that, bro. Hope you're having a blessed one. That's chosen right there, man. Uh, thank you very much. And that uh, follows up with Steve Williams. Uh, I don't think that's Dr. Debt Steve Williams or uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin's uh, original government name, Steve Williams. But at the same time, you know, we want to say thank you. Oh, yeah, and I think the $6 million man was named Steve Williams too, right, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, uh, thank you very much. Congrats. He's saying congrats to me. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I appreciate it, man. I couldn't have done it without you all. But this has been the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, I encourage you all, for those that didn't check out the interview with uh, Mario Edwards Jr., please uh, do so. That's available right now. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. And also thank you to each and every one of you that are in the chat that are on Facebook. Yeah, that's right. We're going live right now on Facebook also, man. So every single time from now on, when we go live on the State of the Saints podcast on YouTube, we will be going live on Facebook. So I want to thank the Facebook audience for coming along right now, you know what I'm saying, being a part of the show. And, uh, you know, so uh, come along, man, be a part of the YouTube experience as well uh also uh, facebook.com if you're not on facebook.com search the state of the saints podcast uh the audio version of the state of the saints podcast is available on itunes spotify iheartradio.com and um 
you all have a, a beautiful and blessed evening man we're doing the show on friday evening so have a good evening or if you're um, li uh, listening around the world, I know we have a lot of people like Herman. I think he's out there in Italy. Um, I don't know if he's uh, watching this right now, but good morning to him. I uh, want to give a special shout out to everybody that's li listening overseas, man. Some people in the armed forces and stuff like that be checking out the show. So, man, y'all be safe out there. And until uh, next time, all I got to say is. <laughs>